Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you need IT consulting, if you need IT consulting, go to WillieHow.com, click the Hire Us or the Contact form. They go to the same place. Fill that out and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. This is the next video in our series on how to host your own email. So this is the video where we're going to make sure that we've got all of the things that we need to make this successful. And then the last video will be the setup for this particular scenario. So if you remember what this scenario is, it is that you have a dynamic IP address. Your ISP allows port 25 inbound. Um, and you actually have a non-NATed or a non-CG NAT <clears throat> address on your router. So there's a few things that you're going to need. Now, if there's any question, let's hop over to the screen here. If there's any question whether your ISP is blocking inbound 25 to you, what you can do is port forward or go in and enable port forwarding on your router from port 25 to something internal. And if you get a, a cl uh, closed, uh, if you don't have something listening on port 25, what that means is that the router, it will see that the router has 25 open, but something behind it didn't respond. So that's kind of a kind of a quick test. If you've got any other questions about, you know, whether you're able to use port 25, go ahead and put those down below. Now, it may not even matter depending on this. So there's, like I said, a few things you're going to need. You're going to need to be able to do some port forwarding. So you need access to your router and it needs to have a non NAT address or a non, and a non CG NAT address on its WAN interface. doesn't matter whether it's dynamic or not. Then what you're going to need is you're going to need your mail server. And uh, what we are using for that is the Synology DS2422+. Plus. We're going to set that up in the next video in its entirety to receive email. So you get to see the specs and how we're doing those things. I already mentioned you need access to your router. So in this case, I have an edge router at the edge. So you're going to see that. The next thing that you're going to need is a domain. And I'm going to be using uh, bitsandbourbon.com. That is the... Uh, going to be the website for the new podcast where we talk about technology and have a little uh, libation. And um, so you're going to need access to that. I always recommend Google Domains. I'm not an affiliate. Google doesn't pay me. I'm just telling you that Google is usually the easiest to work with in these instances. And then the other thing that you're going to need, you hear a lot of people say that you have to have a pointer record or reverse DNS. And you, you don't necessarily need that. And how do we get around that? We use an outgoing SMTP relay. Now, there is DNS exit, and I'm going to show you why I use them. I'm not an affiliate. I don't make any money off this. Then there is also, for outbound, there's also Mailgun. But Mailgun is going to cost you a lot more money after your trial is up, whereas DNS exit is not as expensive. So... Uh, what DNS exit can do for you is a couple of things. So we talked about being able to have redundancies built into this system. Well, DNS exit is going to allow a couple of things. It's going to allow you to send outbound, and we're going to show you how to set up your DNS to do all of this. Uh, and we're also going to show you how to set up your mail server to do this. You're going to do, be doing some relaying and things like that. And DNS exit even allows you to work around if port 25 is blocked. They have other ports available that you can use to make this happen. So now in our case, my ISP does not block port 25. So our first video on this, or our first uh, rollout video is gonna be with port 25. Now, the other thing that I really like about DNS exit is not only do you get the reliable relay you get uh, DKIM set up. The other thing that you can do with email is you can do backup MX. And what it allows you to do for $25 a year is it allows you to spool mail there. So we know that like Gmail has a 24 or 48 hour retry period, right? So within the SMTP um, specification that the internet task force put out and you can go back to a live stream where we talked about that 
mail servers have a retry mechanism built in and you can adjust it. Now, they suggested five days as we've seen Google uses, I think it's 24 hours or 48 hours, can't remember off the top of my head. But what this is gonna allow you to do for $25 a year per domain is you get unlimited mail spooling. So if your email uh, server goes off, it will sit there and spool your mail, right? It will store your emails for 30 days and it can be extended. Um, if you also are paying for this, you can actually log into DNS exits webmail and check that mail while you are waiting to get your email server back online. So they also do some spam filtering. So we're going to set both of these services up with the next video. It'll be the relay and it'll be the backup MX. I would use both of those. So to recap, you need access to your router. You need uh, in this video, you're going to need your ISP to not be blocking port 25. You're going to need your mail server. For us, we're going to use the DS2422+. We're going to set that up. You need a domain. In my case, I'm using bitsandbourbon.com. And then you're going to need an SMTP relay service. And we are going to use DNS exit. We're also going to set up that backup MX. So that's it. So make sure you've got all of these things ready to go. And then in the next video, we're going to roll this out. So the next video will be a little bit longer, um, but we're going to move through it pretty quickly. Uh, if you've watched the videos now in series, you understand what we're doing, why we're doing it, and now everything that you need. And so in the next video, I'm not going to go back over this, we're just going to proceed with the setup from everything and you're going to see how quickly we can get through this. If you've got any questions about this process or the services, uh, go ahead and put those down in the comments. You can reach out at the comment uh, at our uh, contact form uh, for any other questions maybe that you don't want to put on YouTube. Sometimes YouTube does block comments. So if you've got some things, you can always do that. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Those links are down below. If you need IT consulting, go to willyhow.com. Fill out the contact form or click the Hire Us button because it will take you to the contact form. Someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible if you'd like to support the channel by becoming a Patreon, a patron on Patreon, or by using our clearly marked affiliate links. That information is all down below. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.